This is the Cato Daily Podcast for Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. I'm Caleb Brown. It's a bit of a complicated story, but there was, for some time yesterday, a negative price for oil. Cato's Emma Ashford discusses what that means for various oil-producing nations and their relationships to one another. A series of events led us to, as of this recording, yesterday, uh, a negative price of a barrel of oil. What brought us here? So uh, it's it's a really, um, it's a fairly complicated story uh, that you could boil down to a really, really simple one. And the really simple answer is no one's driving anywhere, no one's flying anywhere, no one's cruising anywhere, a lot of factories are shut down. So there's this huge demand side shock. Um, and so nobody's really buying oil. And then you add into that um, some of the other stuff that's been going on, a a sort of a a price war between the Saudis and the Russians. Um, You add in some technical glitches. That is to say that the uh, the reason oil prices actually went negative yesterday is um, is mostly because market traders suddenly realized that they were about to have to actually take possession of this oil and they don't have any storage available, which is why they were trying to pay people to take it off their hands. So, you know, it's it, at heart, it's a very simple story about demand, uh, not enough demand, too much supply, um, but it gets just a little technical when you're talking about why it actually went negative. W- the world is basically, I don't wanna say drowning in oil at the moment, but we, we were in a situation a month, couple of months ago where we had a real supply glut, right? So um, the Saudis and the Russians had this OPEC plus deal um, that basically broke down. And so um, they both decided to pump as much as they could uh, to try and, and win the price for. Um, and so we were already in a position of oversupply. All this extra oil got dumped onto the market. Nobody's buying any oil. Um, and we're literally in a situation where the storage facilities for oil all around the world are filling up. Every tanker ship that's available, every um, storage area that's available, every barrel that's available is being used to store oil, and it's not all getting used like it usually does. So what does this mean for uh, countries uh, like Saudi Arabia, like Russia, like the United States uh, in terms of their relationships? So, um, so first of all, in terms of their domestic economic situation, um, it's not great for any country that's a major oil producer. Um, we, you know, somebody like the Saudis, where they have a fairly low cost of production, they're probably going to be able to push through this, drawing on reserves. Um, someone like the Russians, or somewhere like, say, Nigeria, or you know, Venezuela, where they um, they're very dependent on oil revenues, um, it's going to be a much bigger budgetary problem for them. Um, And then you've got the US, which is an oil producer, but it's a different kind of oil producer, right? It's uh, oil is not the only thing in our economy. Um, It's, uh, it's, it's important. um, And it's going to hurt producers, um, you know, fracking producers in places like the Dakotas or Western Pennsylvania. um, But it's not going to overall sort of destroy the US budget and economy that these companies are going under. Okay. So uh, going forward, uh, you mentioned before we started recording that if you look 20 days out, oil is effectively trading at a reasonably normal price. Well, you know, I I said reasonably normal price. um, And by that, I mean, it's not negative, right? (laughs) It's not absurd. Traders are not paying people to take um, June futures uh, contracts off their hands like they are with the, the May ones. Um, but it still is trading. Futures are trading at somewhere in the vicinity of 15 or $20. Um, and, and that's sort of yo-yoing wildly. So who knows by the time you hear this, what it'll look like. Um, but that does imply that looking a little further out, one month, two months, traders, I think, still have some hope um, that maybe economies and countries around the world will start to open up a little more. Maybe some of this oil will start start to get used. um, And it's not going to be quite the crunch that it is today. That said, um, you know, again, I said a reasonably normal price for oil, um, $20 a barrel, $15 a barrel for oil is not a um, a historically normal price for oil, at least in terms of recent history of the last several decades. Um, Oil has not been priced this low since practically the end of the Second World War. Um, So this is uh, sort of a historic 
collapse in the oil price. Um, and it's it's being driven by, you know, we have both a demand shock and a supply shock at the same time. And that's pretty much unprecedented. So um, nobody in the oil market or outside really knows where this is going to go at this point. Um, but it's, it's not a great time to be an oil producer. Emma Ashford is a research fellow at the Cato Institute. Subscribe to the Cato Daily Podcast wherever you please and follow us on Twitter at Cato Podcast. 